Welcome to artillery training. In a recent joint operation, we used manually fired artillery batteries to provide indirect fire support to a company-sized element. Whilst obviously not as fast as the artillery computer, most support pieces are given in Arma, manually laying and firing the gun is an enjoyable experience that is satisfying to get correct. The math isn't too hard, and it can provide both the gun crews and the players being supported with an immersive, an immersive experience. For today's examples, we're going to be using the Soviet D30 122mm howitzer. Through CUP and the H range tables, we can use a variety of indirect fire devices, be it the US M119, 82mm mortars, and so on. We're simply using the D30 because it's the same model as we used in the joint operation. However, the processes taught here are the same regardless of the base. To begin with, there are a few things you absolutely require in order to lay and fire any artillery piece in the game. First is the ACE map tools. Most infantry will be used to dropping these to save marginal weight in operations, but a gun crew cannot achieve their objectives without one. Second is the universal artillery range table. Take note that the Mark VI 82mm mortar uses its own tables, as the sniper rifles. You must have the correct range table item in order to acquire firing solutions for any of the weapons we are talking about today. This table automatically creates as many tables as there are artillery pieces on the field. Should you have an M119 next to you, it will create a second table for that gun as well, but remain a single item in your inventory. The final things I recommend are a physical pen and paper and a calculator. I choose to use a separate calculator on my desk and not the one in Windows, as alt tabbing runs the risk of firing the gun by accident and also slowing me down. With those things in hand, we can start to lay the gun for our first target. Now, acquiring targets may differ if you are in another group or under specific mission parameters. In our case, we used markers provided by our forward observer, but you may be required to locate targets on an 8-figure grid, or even inside of a 6-figure grid, and work from there. Regardless of how targets are provided to the battery, the process for laying in the gun remains the same. First, marker gun positions. In this example, in the video, my gun and my position are always present on the map. But this might not be the case in mission, and we need to know where our gun is in order to acquire accurate bearing and distance readings. Once marked, note down your gun's elevation. This can be acquired from the number under the six-figure grid present on the cursor in the map screen. Another method of acquiring elevation is to use a micro dagger. This can display the elevation of your current position on screen, and may be useful for mortar teams who are on the move more consistently. However you acquire it, note down your gun's elevation number as it will be key components to your firing solutions going forward. With your gun's elevation noted, you will stand by for fire missions. When one comes in, the battery commander will relay it to the gun crews, and you can begin acquiring and laying the gun. The first step is to take the ACE map tools, whichever size is best suited to your card target, and getting an accurate bearing in mills. You achieve this by dragging the center dot of the compass over your gun, and whilst holding ALT, drag the arrow on the compass around so that it lies over your target. This rotates the compass without moving it. Mills are read on this compass in hundreds. 2 is 200, 58 is 5800, and so on. The smallest lanes are 20s. In this example, our target sits at a bearing of 6250 degrees from our gun's position. With this bearing acquired, take a note of it on your paper and then drag the compass itself around to get dis dis distance using the ruler on its side. Note that the compass maintains its rotation so as to ensure the distance can be measured correctly. For our example, the target lies 2760 meters from our gun. On the ruler, each number is a kilometer, with smaller lanes being 20 for the smallest and 100 for the intermediate lanes. On the smaller compass tool, this is slightly different but not by much. On that tool, increments increase in tens instead. Now, with our bearing and range to target acquired, our next step is to note the difference in elevation between our gun and the target. Our target sits at an elevation of 202 meters. This makes the difference in elevation between our gun and the target 157. Note this down. These three num numbers are integral to every firing solution. Range, bearing, difference in elevation. The battery commander will want to know these, so note them down every time and don't just store one in memory and hold it for the next step. The commander of your battery can use these to tell if someone in the crew is laying a gun incorrectly. So, we have a range, bearing, and difference in elevation. It's finally time to open our range table. Depending on angle of shot and the charge of shot, we will refer to different areas of the table. In our example, we're attempting a low angle charge one shot given the distance to target. It won't be up to you, the gun crew, to determine that. 
the battery commander and his team will determine if a low angle shot is too shallow or if a high angle shot is too slow. As I've said, this example uses a low angle shot at charge 1 as charge 0 cannot hit beyond 2400 meters. Before we do any math, a quick note of something that actually did happen during our joint operation. Charges have limits on both range and elevation. With guns spread out, you may find that your gun cannot elevate a small amount more it needs for a high angle shot. If so, determine if a different charge is more suited and relay that information to your commander so that they can give you time to recalculate. Moving on. With our table, we refer to the low angle charge one tab and find our range. On this table, we note that the numbers for a target at 27 and 2800 are provided. Were we firing at exactly these distances, we could start with one of these numbers, but we aren't, and so we must calculate our own starting elevation number. At 2760 meters, we are just over halfway between the elevation numbers provided of 237 and 246. With a difference of 9 between those numbers, we are about halfway between the ranges, so we half 9, round it to 5, and then add 1 for a total of 6. Working backwards from the range of 2800, we go from an initial elevation value of 246 on the gun to 240 exactly. But wait, you cannot just lock this number into the gun and fire. Rounds drop over time, and we must also calculate for that drop over every 100 meters that the round travels. This leads us to the final step in our calculation. Note the column to the right, with a difference in elevation per 100 meter drop for those ranges. Note that at 2700 we're going to use the negative 40 provided and take our difference in elevation between the gun and the target, and divide that by 100. Our difference of 157 now becomes 1.57. This is then multiplied by that 40 for the drop, and then the number provided on that calculation is subtracted from the initial elevation we created of 240. 1.57 multiplied by 40 is 62.8, rounded down to 62, and 240 minus 62 is a final elevation on the gun of 178. I appreciate that seems like a lot, so let me run through it again real slow. First, you find an initial elevation value using your range. You likely won't be at the exact ranges on the table and so must find a value that suits your target using the numbers provided. Once you have that elevation value, you must then calculate for the difference in elevation per 100 meter drop as the round flies the target. Using the values you find, you can adjust your initial elevation value to find an accurate elevation for the gun. In this case, our initial elevation that we found of 240 becomes a value of 178, and that is the number we use for the gun. Once in the gun and with these values, set the bearing by moving the mouse. Use page up and page down to change elevation, and hold shift to allow for smaller increment changes. When the gun is set, pass that you are ready to fire up the chain to the battery commander, wait for the command, and then rounds out. Depending on the angle of fire, time of flight may be under 10 seconds or over a minute. In this example, we expect impact in less than 12 seconds, and as you can see, splash. In this instance, our low angle shot hit the target very accurately. Be advised that artillery has quite a spread, more than you'd think. Here's the same shot at high angle, and this is still relatively accurate. A gun battery of three or more guns firing more than once per fire mission covers the spread of their shots by laying down more fire. This one shot landing slightly beyond is not inaccurate, it's just an example of artillery spread on an AO. I hope this brief tutorial on manual artillery might prompt people to pick it up. With a good team, artillery can provide incredibly damaging indirect fire on infantry, buildings, or even vehicle targets, and it's a nice change of pace from a standard operation. My name is Lutch Video, and thank you for watching.